Yeah, uh, thanks, Chair. Just, uh, briefly, just to comment on the bill and the, the, the purpose of it, and just to commend uh, Deputy McGrath and to thank the government for um, acting on it to take it on board to ensure that it becomes legislation without delay. And I think when you look at uh, where we are now in terms of our banking uh, sector, the fact that they have been repaired in, in many areas, the real issue now is to deal with the fallout from previous times in terms of distressed loans. And what we talk, when we talk about distressed loans, what we're talking about is stressed families, stressed individuals, people who see no hope. And the idea that we just could cut them adrift as a, as a people, as a country, as a government, uh, to vulture funds that were unregulated, uh, beggars belief in quite truthful minister. And I was always very concerned when we used to see large-scale sale of loans uh, to these funds, uh, and they unregulated. And we've been unable to guarantee that they would at least be uh, compliance uh, with the codes of conduct. And that in itself uh, put huge pressure on individuals. And of course, the issue raised by uh, Deputy McGuinness in the context of the individuals. It is hard to explain to an individual that their loan could be sold for a knockdown price to a vulture fund. And yet, they can't engage uh, with uh, their lender directly uh, to restructure uh, and to write off a certain amount of money. Uh, and, and I believe that what we are effectively doing is allow vulture funds to profiteer, not only off the individual, but off the collective uh, economy here as well. And it is just a quick fix solution. The banks are, uh, uh, have impaired balance sheets. They don't want to um, have to retain certain ratios of capital for bad loans, and they just want to move these off their, their, their balance sheets as quickly as possible. And that's, that's what they're at. And the idea that they're trawling through and trying to assess every individual loan and, and, and address them on an individual basis simply is not the case. They put large swathes of loans into, a, into one book and, and, and hock it off. So I believe that that is a major issue and something that has to be addressed. And of course, Mario Draghi, when he did appear before um, the Finance Committee, did say quite clearly, Minister, that we're almost operating in a quasi-monopoly here when it comes to banking. That's what uh, Mario Draghi said, a quasi-monopoly. So in other words, if you have a problem with one bank, you can't go to another bank. You can't put your file under your arm, walk down uh, the Mall in Cork or some other financial street uh, in anywhere in, in Ireland and go to another bank. So you're enslaved to the bank that you're with. And it is very difficult for people to access credit in this country if there's any distress at all. Any distress at all. They're slaves to that particular bank. And that is a major issue that has to be addressed to, to try and alleviate the burden on the individuals. And then reference is often made by uh, you, Minister, and the government that, you know, because of the fact that there's so many distressed loans uh, on the pillar bank's balance sheets, that that's why mortgage rates are higher in this country vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the Eurozone. The fact of the matter is, Minister, interest rates are twice what they are in the Eurozone. And the reason they're twice uh, what they are in the Eurozone is simply that our banks are gouging the Irish economy. Here, here. That's what they're at. Day in, day out, they're gouging out of the pockets of uh, mortgage holders and small and medium-sized businesses. 3.4% for a mortgage in this country, you go to the Eurozone, 1.7, 1.72. And that is the reality, Minister. So the idea that the banks are doing us a favour uh, in terms of how they're conducting their affairs simply does not stack up when you analyse it. And Mario Draghi said it in the most diplomatic way possible. We're oping, uh, operating a quasi-monopoly in this country when it comes to banking. We saved AIB, we threw a lifeline to Bank of Ireland uh, through the guarantee, we injected a massive amount of capital into them as well. And this is what we get in return. So I think, Minister, now that the banks have been stabilised, there's no threat to them directly, and therefore no threat directly to the economy, it is time that they did accept their responsibilities to provide reasonable credit at reasonable rates uh, in terms of uh, mortgages and small and medium-sized businesses. And any analysis minister, uh, even by the credit review group that sits in the Department of Enterprise, will show that they're still pretending to you that they're lending. They're pretending to you. And they're pretending to the rest of us as well. All they're doing is restructuring loans and pretending that it's new, it's, it, it, that it's new um, uh, lending. And that simply is not helping the Irish economy at a time when it does need uh, uh, to, uh, credit 
uh, for small and medium-sized business to grow and continue to grow. So a lot of work needs to be done. So in, de in terms of Deputy McGrath's uh, proposals and the bill, and when enacted, it will address the issue of compliance uh, and, and regulation uh, of same. But the broader issue of banking in this country has to be addressed. And our pillar banks owe it to the people and to this parliament to ensure that it's fair lending practices and that they're not operating a monopoly in this country and gouging the Irish economy and Irish lenders.